All right, so we're back again. Trying to shoot a few videos here. Uh, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Trying to shoot a few videos to, uh, if I got something to upload when I'm out of town, sitting in the motel and all these doctor's appointments. I got to be down there like four days or they got, maybe it's five. I, I don't know, I don't know for sure. Uh, whenever my wife says it's time to come home, that's when we're coming home, I guess. She takes care of all that stuff. <coughs> Anyways, um, I gotta go down there. They figure two days for travel, and then they uh, a couple of days to deal with the doctors and do any more MRIs and any rest of that stuff that they feel like they need to do. I'm gonna pick a piece of this coral. I'll probably pick the clunkiest. I can find it here. There's a couple small pieces here that small clunky pieces that maybe I'll beat on. Um, this dude right here is obviously not quite as thick as it is wide but it ain't far from it the longest length is of course here to here but uh you don't have any width to get down to this part so the actual point is probably only going to be about in this length wise right here is about all we're going to probably end up with um, but i can use these to try and knock this ridge off and flatten this thing out some and see what we can do here. I, I hit one piece when I opened up this box. You all seen that if you watched the unboxing video. Totally unfamiliar. As easy as that just popped off, it's obviously going to nap extremely easy. So I'm going to have to try to forego the bull in the china closet uh, thing I always got. So uh, try and take it easy on it. Uh, shot right down that oops, got that wrist brace on shot right down that and stopped that cortex but we're going to try and knock one down this other way too once we get rid of some of this cortex ooh that's turning a little bit blue right there this edge here is entirely well it's Vortex for the most part, and too thin. Knock that cortex back. Don't have very much cortex on it, but it's got some. All right. and think about this a little bit so I don't just blow it up and end up with a with a mini Snickers out of it or whatever that would be I, I don't know I don't really actually eat candy too much anymore try to avoid sugars as much as possible Pretty much eat a low carb kind of diet. Yeah, the dogs are gonna have a fit here. That sound like there's someone pulling up here. Or it could be next door. They're cutting hay next door also. So sorry about the dogs. All right, ran a skimming flake there, and for some reason that completely hinged out right there. Look at that. Look at that hinge. Just like the hinge on a door. It's alright, it didn't go too deep, so hopefully. Now I'm not sure why that did that. If one of you guys on there knows why that did that, or has a theory on why it did it, let me know.
don't know if it was pressure pressure on the pad or something something like that or what caused that running that along there man that's pretty stuff isn't it too many more from the end if I can avoid it. I'd like to be able to save a little bit of length, but I am still dealing with some of this Cortex, which is super soft. Get rid of that piece. This is beautiful material. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is beautiful material from Pearl Yoder. If I blow this up it won't be it won't be the materials fault it'll be all mine because they're not a flaw in this right now unless I put one in it figure out how I'm gonna handle this because this edge dropped so far down here I still need to still need to take more off this top and try and save as much of this bottom so I can retain some width because if I just start hitting on here then pretty soon now I'm only this wide I want to try and save as much of that as I can so I'm going to have to make a choice here because I'm either going to have to hit from the end some to thin this down or, or I'm going to have to bring that edge in now I got another hinge flake right there it must be something I'm doing. But uh, we got it back out though. Still trying to maintain as much of this width as possible and keep my length. We should have measured this before I started because we've not lost hardly any length at all. off some money to get a box of Roy Miller's Flint Ridge from Ronnie and uh, they're all small pieces probably pieces about like this but uh, I am excited about getting it there were some beautiful colors in that box I'd seen that he had posted some and uh, I was too late story of my life <laughs> and uh, Sent him a message. And he said that he would message me when he got a box together for me, and and he did. We don't have any flake scars going across this bottom side. I'd like to start adding a few of those, thinning it out a little bit right there. It feels snappy. I mean, it is. I think it's beautifully heat treated. It acts like it is. I had to put a little bitty crack right there. I'm not, no, I guess not. Just gotta really baby this. I'm not start beating on it like I'm beating on some raw Texas stuff. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, doggone it. 
There went the width we were trying to preserve. At least some of it. We can make this down here the base. Yeah, this will be our base. And I don't know what we're going to make. Probably not. Uh, it may just be a, I guess, what's considered a fantasy point that's not any real style. I don't always make any kind of real styles. I'm not, I like to get where I can copy point styles from the past. But Honestly, looking at the artifacts that I collect and the ones that I've been studying and looking at, point styles really just don't seem to be like set in stone. I mean, some guys, they look at it, look at it on them artifacts and they go, no, it's got to be this way. If it isn't that way, then it's not correct. No, well, I got news for you. People weren't so much different back then than they are right now. And there was people that sucked at making arrowheads, and there was people that were fantastic, the same as there is today. No difference. I mean, we might have more technology today. We may be more knowledgeable about a lot of things and the work of life and everything else, but for the most part, People are still people. <laughs> and they were then what they are now. Some people were good at things and some people weren't. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you're probably not good at that even though you're not, you still have to do them. And making arrowheads isn't any different than that. It wasn't any different than that for people in the past. Boy, oh boy. I feel like this could be Kind of I think I'm gonna run some it's a little early in the game but I think I'm gonna run some pressure on that just to uh, regularize it and then we'll do some indirect and see if I can keep from breaking it in half. So trying to be a little cautious, I've never worked this material before, so I just trying to be cautious and not busted. It's got a pretty thick edge still on it. This this piece is still pretty pretty thick. It's a lot thinner than we started on but boy look how it pressure flakes. Good night. stuff is this high quality and heat treated to perfection the way it seems there anyways now I'm gonna lose some of this edge pressure flaking and I know that anytime you run a set of pressure flakes you're losing some size well, I had a little bit of a mess going on there and uh, I don't know if I had much of a choice really 
result realistically with an artifact most of the artifacts you find that's already thin enough I got great respect for people that started 300,000 years not just Native Americans here because people started making stone tools making and using stone tools long before there was ever a Native American in the United States from best we can tell anyways um, somewhere around 250 300,000 years ago something like that I believe I could be wrong I'm not a historian but I believe that's about what it was somewhere around there I'm gonna go ahead and take a indirect strike right here if you can see this this is lower and I'm gonna take some of that off just some short ones in there get that going in the right direction that works out oh yeah buddy uh oh I just knocked my pad off Whew. not to go easy here because that stuff is flaking extremely easy. I got a little bit of a gouge in there. It's another another hinge. So I don't know if that's something I'm doing or yes, the material is hingy. I'm sure I'll work that. I have a pad. I like to use, when I'm doing this indirect, I played around with a bunch of indirect sticks. And, uh, I really like hitting metal directly on the metal, not on uh, not on plastic like that. Just never could run good flakes with uh, indirect stick like that. Once I went to this, I started having a lot more luck with my indirect and this piece of whitetail antler has really worked really well for me I'll tell you I already kind of like I messed up a little bit Wasn't expecting that to flake quite as easy and took away a lot more of my material than I wanted to. But we'll continue on here. See if we can turn it into something. I don't even know what, but something. I'm just going along taking some opportune flakes. I 
I may knock on this till I ain't got much left. I don't know. I'm uh, trying not to do that. But. I was a little bit more aggressive than I should have been, even though I was trying to be careful. A little more aggressive than I should have been, and took away a little more material than I would have liked. I'll tell you, we need to get rid of that. I got rid of most of it. I'll tell you what, it's pretty thin. Pretty daggone thin. I'm afraid of getting it too thin too fast. Then not being able to run cleanup flakes across, which someone else might have no problem running cleanup flakes across, thin piece like that, but I know I struggle with it, so you know, if I can get Get that to travel right along that or not. It's got a little bitty step right there. It's probably going to stop it. Yeah, it's probably going to stop right there, unfortunately. But, nope. Look at that, went right on across it. That dude's thin. <laughs> like, we're gonna have to stop there. No more indirect. We're gonna regularize this thing best we can. Hope we still got something left of it. That went way easier than. So I know that when I start snapping on some more of this, then I'm gonna have to go even easier. Um, let's uh, let's try the. Oh, let's see here. I think I'm in frame right there. I think. My problem is keep it in frame. My head has to be farther away from it and I can't hardly see. When you're doing this, and I still, I still messed up. When you're doing this, especially when you have these big gaps like this, this hand is just sitting here. It's just resting in there. I'm trying not to put any pressure on this because until you get used to, until I learned not to use pressure with this hand and do nothing but just cradle it there, man, I'd snap them in half, one after another. Especially when I first started, I was playing with some slabs too. I haven't actually worked a slab in a long time, but not that I'm opposed to working slabs. But, uh, And I'd snap them in half, man, one after another. This thing's so disorganized. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you get used to this material. I can already tell this won't be the last box of this I get. 
I need more material like I need a hole in the head. It's a little straighter there. Base a little straighter. Pick on this a bit and then we'll probably scrunch the edge. I'm trying to, I really need to get a different pad. The holes are so big in this one that I was trying to fall through the fall into it, especially when I'm doing really little points. Sorry about that, I know I was off the, too close up to the camera. I do that to get it closer up to my eyes because I have a hard time seeing it. But, uh, I still have to get used to the whole focus thing. I'm trying to look in the look in the viewfinder, and I got the the thing that the phone's clamped in covers up most of the picture. I got an idea about how to get around that, but uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to play with it. I mean, what a guy needs, he needs a, when he's doing these videos, he needs a, he needs a separate monitor that's showing what's happening there so you can see where you're at. Maybe some of the guys have that, I don't know. But, uh, I'm a little bit technology challenged. My wife wouldn't agree, <laughs> but uh, I am. Yeah, I gotta get out there and get all the hay picked up. I need to do it tonight. It's an awful lot of moving stuff around and getting things together. My tip's fat. I have no idea what I'm going to make out of this. Probably no recognizable point. I'll tell you what, I sent them flakes right across that. But then that tip out. You can flat send some flakes I've got it. You can definitely send some flakes across this stuff. Zoom back out here. Right. I think we're zoomed back out. Well, I'm gonna scrunch this thing. I could easily turn this into another Kyokia. But I just made one. Really all I was doing is playing with this material just to because I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I 
can't seem to get a scrunch on the end of that. But. It's got some orange banding going through there. This side's a little ugly. I need to run some pressure flakes across that thing. Just to purdy that side up a little bit. Well, that side's okay. I mean, if I run some pressure flakes across that, that's gonna be, it'll be pretty nice. This here is, run some pressure flakes in right there just to kind of clean this stuff up a little bit. Let's try and do that. I'm gonna go with the finer. Finer copper flaker with a fairly decent point on it. I hope that's not too loud for you guys. Or where this shop sits, it's it's uh, within about 30 yards of the property line, and there's big hay equipment coming across out here and making racket. So hopefully that's not too loud. zoom in on this again or try it I believe I'm in frame we're just trying to run some flakes in here because it's got it's kind of a high ridge right here and we want to flatten that out this edge on this side is still a little fat and we're pushing in and down See, that's cleaning that up all along that edge there. And down. In and down. That side looks much better. Take a few flakes over here. Just trying to clean things up a little bit. I was still working in the shop. I was going to print all my shipping labels for all the orders for all the stuff I got done today. And uh, my website, I bought the shipping labels and my website won't print them. So try again later. So, well, if my website's on strike or what's happening there, but. Man, if I can pull this off and not snap it in the, getting the notches in it, whatever I, however I decide to notch it, that'd be a nice little point. And you don't even have to notch it. I mean, you could leave it like that if that's what you wanted. And there's point styles that look like that. Especially some of the smaller ones. I can't think of the names right offhand. I'm still learning all those, but uh, they're out there.
thinking about other things and it's got a lenticular shape to it I don't think I'm going to do that much more to it. I'm going to clean these edges up, notch it, and, and uh, we're going to be done. All I'm doing is picking off these deltas. here and there I do need to take a few flakes at this base hopefully without breaking it You know, that's not half bad. For my uh, my skill level, I am pretty doggone happy with how this is going. It really wasn't that long ago when uh, I couldn't just make a point at wheel. I couldn't just say, hey, I'm going to go make a point. And in fact, I uh, get so frustrated with percussion that I'd make some things from slabs just so I could get a finished point. <laughs> and once I got some things through my thick skull, Absolutely beautiful material. Absolutely beautiful. Looks like creamsicle. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera or not, but looks like a creamsicle. It's awesome. All right. I'm gonna get my tool I just love to hate. And my dome pad. And I am gonna pick around on this. Actually, I'm gonna, that's got a burr on it. No burrs. I hope y'all can see this. Picking straight down, getting the cleaning up the edge. And a little fine. Yeah, that grabbed you all the way down it. And I'm not sharpening this to hunt with, I'm just trying to get a edge that looks decent. Some of y'all may not think it looks decent, <laughs> that's okay too. I don't even know how some of y'all get the edges that you get, it's just incredible. Some of y'all out there are just amazing at this. I hope to get there someday. I don't know if I will or not, but that needs a little flake. Right there, just like that. Popped off there. Uh, 
just trying to clean up around the edge. Just a little bit there. I'll tell you, not that long ago, if I made a point like this with percussion from a small, I remember the first time it happened. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't anywhere near as good as this one. And I was so excited. I don't know what hooked me so much about this flint napping, but boy, I'll tell you what. From the word go, I was hooked. I'll tell you, I got my... <laughs> I was so excited. I started ordering tools. and I uh, got on there and I... I grew up out west and I always had a thing for obsidian. Not to get sidetracked here, but I had a fellow tell me how to nap in. He said, no serious napper naps obsidian. And uh, someone should have told all them Indians out west that because uh, i sure seen an awful lot of, an awful lot of obsidian uh, arrowheads out west. <laughs> That's 99% of what we found was obsidian and uh, debitage, obsidian flakes and chunks and pieces. There wasn't hardly a place on the ground where you couldn't find obsidian pieces wherever you looked. I mean, the thousands and thousands and thousands of years it must have took to establish all that debitage. And the thing is, where we where we were, there was no obsidian even close hundreds of miles away hundreds and uh, there's still obsidian everywhere and I'm assuming it's from them bringing back trade blanks and stuff like that and spalls and knocking knocking flakes off when they're butchering animals and all that kind of stuff uh, all those years of that is why you find all them flakes there's a flake I just found there on the ground, and there's a bird point in that. I gotta go through this stuff that's on the ground here. If you see this, and you're going, boy, oh, he's wasteful. I do pick through this stuff. Pick up a bunch of this stuff that I think I can get a point out of, or make a little biface so I can sell the biface. Now, I have no idea what I'm gonna do for notching on this. I feel like I had a get my book and do some studying first but I don't think I'm going to I'm just going to throw some notches in it and we're going to call it good I don't always draw them on but I'm going to try to on this one I just make this little whatever you want to call that corner notch or something like that maybe Is that what that's called already don't look even <laughs> it most certainly does not It may not look even when we're done either, either, but we're gonna try that. I think that'll look okay. A little dovetail or whatever you want to call it. Now, I don't normally use this for notching. But I kind of feel like I should on this one. Because this stuff is so daggone fragile. It's got a tiny little hinge right there, fingernail hinge. Took part of it off. I'm going to zoom this back out on the notching. Yeah, I think we're in the right one. 
And again, I'm going to use my my uh, pad that's got the narrow. Let's hope we don't blow this up. It's probably a bad idea to use a tool that you're not used to using. Well, my mark on this side is a little different than the mark on that side. Match the other side up with this side. I got a pop out there, but Take those pencil marks off because this pencil mark looks like it's pretty close to where it needs to be. I like these notches to turn up just a little bit if I can without breaking it. Doesn't have to turn up a lot. But I would like them to turn up just a little bit. There's still hope. Yep. Not stalled out. Uh, so this ear ear must have knocked off a little actually it knocked off beefs from the outside here so I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do here to try to even these things up a little bit that's typical for me <laughs> damage control all the time I have a certain idea in my mind and I just have to go with whatever I mess up. Get it fixed as I can. This may not be so bad, just pull that edge in a little bit. Maybe nibble at this a little bit here. Trying to get some symmetry, and it is a little bit off. That 
that actually that actually evened it up a little bit better there. said before that I struggle with symmetry and most of the time I spend more time than I should just chasing my tail around. When you look at it from this side it looks like this this one's a little bit doesn't have as quite as deep a notch. For some reason don't look as bad from the other side. What do we got happening there? I think we're a little bit wider on this side. Got a little bit of a flare right there. So I'm gonna. Time you got something like that, it's better to take just to bring it back just a little bit at a time because a little bit can make a big difference. It's like, and it's throwing it off some because this color comes up here, so it makes it look like the shoulder where it really starts turning in is higher than this side, and that's optical illusion of part of what's happening there. I take photographs of this thing and then realize oh I need to I need to change this or I need to change that. Sometimes yeah I'm messing around with that tip and it's not liking it neither am I. Scars could have been a little bit better. I need to clean this thing off. Yeah, you got a big towel here, I guess. That's about it. Not all we're gonna do to it. It's a pretty little point. First time working that material, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. taste. It's a little micro 
serrations, micro serrations on there. Zoom this in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Maybe you can. You guys can see them. They're fine. These are super, super fine. Like the fine little teeth you would see on a Shark's tooth, super fine ones. Just enough to cause massive hemorrhaging when you're killing your next mastodon. Or woodland bear or Whatever, whatever all them things were. <laughs> all right. Oops. Don't break it. I think we're gonna call it good at that. Flake scars could have been a little bit better, you know. But it's pretty even. It's lenticular. Pretty th doggone thin, and uh, symmetry is pretty good. Could put a needle point on it, but I'm not going to. As soon as my wife sees that cream sickle on there, she's probably gonna she's gonna claim it anyhow. But and it wouldn't make a nice pendant, or you know something like that. All right, well. Y'all hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep napping.